the screen when you're ready. Okay. All right. Thanks, Stacy. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us again. I, I see a few familiar names up on the, the screen. So this is awesome. We appreciate your support of the Botanical Garden. And this is a way to try and stay relevant in the, this current situation. There's Dan waving. <laughs> so uh, Dan and I are acquainted through the Garden Writers Association now called Garden Com for Garden Communicators. Um, so we, I met him a few years ago and uh, happy that I did because he's a fun guy to be with and an interesting guy. And I want to let me brag him up a little bit here uh, before we get going. So um, Dan is president of Terra Nova Nurseries in Canby, Oregon. Uh, has become the major leader. And I see you're an influencer. I thought you had to be like 21 to be an influencer. So. Oh. <laughs> it, and in ornamental plant breeding. Uh, so you started Terra Nova in 92, introduced since then over a thousand plants to horticulture. And you're known for your groundbreaking work with herbaceous perennials. And if folks don't know, herbaceous perennials are ones that die to the ground but the roots are alive, they come back, they're not woody. Like and, peonies. Yes, uh, such as coral bells or the, the heucheras and foam flowers, the tiarella and cone flowers, echinacea. And the company employs more than a hundred people and it's a, a plant breeding facility, which I visited, which was awesome. It's a state-of-the-art tissue culture lab and we definitely need to talk about that because that's maybe not real familiar uh, to a lot of people. He's got two gardening books under his belt, a sought after speaker, and uh, he does plant and horticulture related topics. He's received the award of merit of the highest honor bestowed by the Amer Perennial Plant Association, as well as the Royal Horticultural Society's Reginald Corey Memorial Cup. And just recently, oh look, he's glowing, recognized <laughs> <laughs> extraordinary achievement in the field of plant breeding. It's the Luther Burbank Award named for Luther Burbank, the legendary American plant breeder. And uh, Stacey, I don't know if you can show that little splash page that we were looking at before. There's a, a quote from the Oregonian, uh, uh, Tim, uh, the pecs say, oh, with, with, all, yeah, with all due respect, Dan Heim should be his own species. He's certainly a, a force of nature in the horticultural world. So look at that, this guy has been busy doing stuff. So lots, lots of awards. You've been on Martha Stewart. I mean, that's got to be up there. That was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Lots of presentations. And, and you guys, you've traveled the world, 37 countries, visited, spoken in 14 countries. But you guys are international now with, uh, with your plant uh, business. So that's pretty exciting, too. Yeah, we... Um... We were a very early entry into China. And the reason we were there with this Japanese company was to find an inexpensive place to propagate plants. And the people there said, hey, we have a huge middle class. And, you know, it's 20 times the Japanese population. And um, we're interested in propagating and carrying your plants. So we helped it. A laboratory over there. It's semi-government run, which means we have clearance for everything. And we've been in uh, several shows over there. And they have a huge, huge, it's like an international um, world's fair for horticulture. And it was to go along with the Beijing Olympics, or with the um, Olympics. And this company used, God, probably a hundred thousand of our plants there and yeah, it's beautiful i could show i could send you slides after yeah i saw some of your facebook pictures of that pretty amazing so, yeah very cool well what a great opportunity to see the world and uh and be with plant people because they're the best <laughs> they are they are that's yeah. you know they they may not even speak the same language but if i speak latin you know talking about the plants they understand and, a lot of sign language, we do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk louder, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't always work. No, I know. 
Uh, yeah, the, and the Latin, I mean, that's that's huge too. And, and I, I encourage people to learn a bit, like when you're starting new plants, if, if it's on the seed packet, uh, like Renee does, I'm always bragging up Renee, uh, learn that name or, you know, at least be a little bit familiar with it. That, that's going to be helpful. Yeah, the problem that most people run into is if I said, oh yeah, I planted some creeping Charlie, there could be six different types of plants called creeping Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, all local, local different names, yeah. But if I say glaucoma, heteracea, we know what we're talking about. Boom, Maybe. and even in Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So uh, I understand you, or one of your blurbs here says, our greatest claim to fame is the populariz popularizing of the new Heuchera varieties, emphasizing foliage. So let's talk a little bit about the Heucheras. Well, well I'm going to I'm going to speak specifically to the um, Alaskan crowd with the euchras with the series we have called Northern Exposure, oh, yeah. and a lot of euchra strains became interbred. They just when you overbreed a plant, they're less strong, and we reached out and we grabbed a species. That, can, that actually grows near the Arctic Circle. It grows in Saskatchewan, which is actually colder than you guys. And um, that's Heuchera richardsonii. And that has given us a whole series. You know, we're crossing it back to our other hardy strains with really colorful foliage and got a whole series called the Northern Exposure Series that does great in Alaska. Recommend it. I, I'm sure it can go to three, zone three. Yeah, I was just looking that up. We were talking about it at the garden the other day. We do three times a week Zoom meetings and, and the topic came up and uh, someone was wondering if, if they were hardy. And I, I know that we have some there and I, I have some. And, you know, something can grow but not thrive, but mine seem to be thriving. And, and so <laughs> at least a zone four, the USDA says we're zone four B in Anchorage now. And of course there are microclimates. There might be a a two or three around town but uh yeah i had a grower in uh, homer uh rita schultz i don't know yep rita joe sure and, and she used to grow a lot of our stuff there and, until she got peony crazy yeah yeah she's still around yeah fifteen thousand plants in the field yeah yeah it's, but, but how smart is that <laughs> well that's turned into a pretty good uh industry here there are over a hundred growers in, even yeah. in Nome, you know, it's just, wow. Because ours are blooming when they're not available anywhere else. That is correct, and you can get yeah. a lot of money. Hey, we appreciate you doing the northern things. A lot of times, you know, you'll read a magazine, and it's like plants for, you know, the southern area or western area, but they don't go quite far enough up the left yeah. coast. So, well, the weirdest you. thing is these northern exposure ones, we were growing in Florida and they were doing great. And we just going, <laughs> why is this happening? So that was a side benefit. Oh, it's just a strong great. plant. <coughs> so Sorry. you guys have more than Not 700 growing. active plant patents. And as we say, you introduced uh, over a thousand new plants. So you've been busy. You produced 700 varieties and ship three million stage three tissue culture plants every year along with five to six million liners i don't know right does sound yeah. familiar it's <laughs> about eight, and a, eight and a half mil oh my gosh somebody's so, got to pay the wages <laughs> <laughs> so uh i actually did visit your facility and you've got your demonstration garden too right uh display garden it's right on the road as you're driving through can be the, yeah, area, through the rural part of uh, outside Portland, you're right there. So you, yeah, and, and the funny thing that uh, I had a Dutch guy come by and he says, "Why are these by the road? If this was in Holland, they would be all taken." <laughs> <laughs> that's not nice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. Well, yeah, uh, uh, but I but I do want to speak to the uh, thousand plants. Yeah, um, Luther Burbank, who is my absolute hero, and. Uh, probably one of the best plant breeders in the world. A uh, guy who went through amazing hardship, uh, nearly died from starvation uh, when he first moved to California. 
he, he attributes his life to a woman who gave him one potato a day. <laughs> I mean, uh, became one of the most famous botanists in the world. He met with the likes of Edison and Ford, if you've ever seen that picture. No. Uh, but he had this very impressive number of 800 cultivars that he introduced. Uh -huh. 800 different plants. This is berries and trees and, and cactus and annuals, perennials. And my goal in life was to beat it. And several years ago, I hit 801 and I was just, <laughs> I, can, I can die now. <laughs> but don't. No, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, so darn it, we just kept breeding, and we're um, over a thousand right now. Probably hit eleven hundred this year. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So, is this all tissue culture stuff? Uh, pretty much. There's the way things are done commercially is we put them in tissue culture. They're super clean, and we'll send them. That's something like the coleus. We'll send them to a grower in Israel or or Guatemala, and they have these screen greenhouses, very clean greenhouses, and they will just do, plant them in, you know, sterilized soil in these long rows, and then they just harvest cuttings like every, sometimes it's every eight days, if they're faster, fast enough growing, and then they sell these little baggies of 100 cuttings each, and that's what goes out the door. So that's okay. what they call URCs. Right, unrooted, unrooted, unrooted cuttings. cuttings. Boy, I, I want a big bag of unrooted coleus cuttings. <laughs> nice stuff. Hey, so uh, I've been to a facility and, and you showed uh, Garden Writers uh, Symposium was there in Portland, I think 2009 or something. It was, it's a while ago. And you've grown yeah. since then for sure. But, and, and we did get to see some tissue culture being done. And if people don't know, and I think it's fascinating, uh, you, they might remember a Petri dish from high school. <laughs> sterilized medium, and I don't know if it's still auger. Or something, They'll know something. about some of the sterile technique and the auger. And so what that's, you, what, that's all what part you, of it. Okay, what are you putting in that? So you've got a Petri dish with stuff in there. Okay, the, just, auger, the auger has sugars, um, when they say salts, they mean fertilizer salts. Mm -hmm. So it's got, basically, it has every single thing a plant needs to grow. You could put starter plants in there, cover it in foil, stick it under your desk, and come back two months later and it'll still be alive and growing. I mean, that's pretty wild. What, are you putting a piece of a stem or a leaf or what? Okay. Good, excellent question, actually. Oh, good, and we didn't even practice that. Okay, so every <laughs> everything from, um, what do you have out there? You have spruce out there. Yes. Uh, from, from a spruce to a uh, small herb has what's called an apical meristem. Stem. So this is the growth point. And if it's a 110-foot bamboo, that apical meristem is the size of a grain of rice. And Sometimes you just have to carve, carve, carve to get to the center. And then there's a sterilization process. It gets stirred in a, a beaker, the magnetic stirrer. And that will give you your starter material. That'll get cut down a little more, put into the auger. And in four to six weeks, you'll get, you know, hopefully like four to 10 shoots on it. And then at that time, you get four to 10 more test tubes, transfer those, and every four to six weeks, you are exponentially increasing that. So you could you could have a million plants in one year. So this is not GMO. You're not altering no, anything. This is more nothing, like cloning. Nothing to do with GMO. This is cloning. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought that was important to talk about that. So. Oh, no. There... <laughs> We have eco-terrorists in Oregon, so we have to, we have to just, every time we have to say, no, we don't do that GMO yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that is fascinating. And uh, you mentioned my favorite plant in there, which we can talk to in a second. What's one of your favorites? I know you started with the heucheras, so was that something you oh, were Oh, heucheras are, yeah, that, that, that is, but I, 
I love the potophyllum. There's, you know, those are the Asian May apples. And they just have up to an 18 inch leaf with incredible modeling. Gotcha. You see that I think on a few of your, tr you have trillium out there with modeled leaves, don't you? Mm, not so much? Not so much. We've got the uh, Astelboides though with the, the oh, leaf. tabularis, huh? Yeah, huge thing. So yeah, like that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, those are nice there. Yeah. Um, so everything from heuchera to echinacea, you know, I'm to I am personally totally in the foliage. And the cooler the foliage, the better. And uh, people say, well, why why heuchera? And thirty years ago, I said this plant has a lot of potential. It grows from the Arctic Circle, as we know all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So that is incredible range. And there's varieties that live up in the mountains. You go to New Mexico, you'll find ones that are only this big. So we say, okay, there's a miniaturizing factor. And then we breed our colorful leaves into these, you know, plain green leaf, green leaf forms, but the, but the leaves are only this big. And we get a whole new series, so. A lot of potential. We're working on flowering forms now. That's coming up. Wow. Yeah, because that was mostly for foliage, but yeah, we we like our flowers too. So yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's great. Well, you kind of started as just a, a plant nerd, didn't you? Like house oh, yeah. plant collector yeah. as, as a kid. A lot, lot of, lot of passion there. It really started in college, actually. I was a, I was a plant. You know, I like nature. I would just do a lot of hiking and get out there and just love the woods and identifying wildflowers along the way. But in uh, college, it just started with one little velvet plant I stuck in the window and it flowered. And I went, well, what do I do next? <laughs> so I got a book called All About House Plants. I think it's still up there um, by Montague Free. And said, oh, and there's peperomia and begonias. And I'm going, whoa. <laughs> so, you know, by the end of that term, my windowsill was totally filled. And I was on my way to becoming the ultimate plant geek. And <laughs> I had a professor who, was, who helped me along the way, uh, McAllister Ruff. He, he was my mentor. All right. Well, like, like your blurb said, you should be your own species. I think, I think you should be an emoji. <laughs> don't know if they have. <laughs> that might be a, the highest honor of all. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, getting to, I'm getting to think that way. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, again, you mentioned my favorite plant, coleus, uh -huh. uh, which, oh, another thing. Uh, that happens. Sometimes you're just going along and maybe you're learning the names of these Latin names and having some fun oh, with that. Aren't, and then aren't, they we, change having, it. <laughs> aren't we having fun? <laughs> <laughs> but then they change the genus. Yeah. So now, now coleus, and we're still going to call it that, I'm sure, but technically... We're just going to use coleus like the common name right. uh, as a... Um, there is actually still a coleus um, as a genus, but it has like one or two species. Uh, but there's uh, Solenostemon. Right. Was the first one. So we got used to that. We bring it into the catalog. And then they said, nah, it's really a plectranthus. And we're just going, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it went. Yeah. So, well, I think we're set up to take a look at your website and via the catalog. So let's take a little journey of Stacy can work her magic there back in the studio. There we let's go. Take a look. There that's we a, go. That's a GM. It's a new one. They're pretty darn hardy. Yeah, we, we grow, we have native ones of those also. That's probably- These, these are, the foliage on these is as nice as the flowers. That's great. If, if you type uh, Terra Nova space coleus, uh, you'll get the screen of all the different coleus we have there. Up in the search? Uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm not, not seeing the search option. 
Can we just uh, go to products? Go, go to, let's see. Go yeah, go to products or just go back to Google and and hit uh, go go to annuals. Drag it down to annuals. And there it cool is. <laughs> All right, you guys, get ready. Here's some garden porn going on. There we go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so um, our story in Colitis is for probably 25 years, we've been collecting different varieties and from the best breeders. And one big group that was very nice came from uh, Wisley. Um, my friend Jim Gardner uh, gave me permission to take cuttings off this collection. A man had just passed away, and but he had left his coleus collection there. And we got some absolute charmers out of that. We began to uh, breed them and select them for being self-branching, of course, for color. Uh, but we could get with our new varieties. Now, self-branching means you never have to pinch them. And you could take one cutting and have a three foot wide plant um, easily in a season. And that was pretty impressive. Um, the, color, the color clouds uh, fall into that. And then sometimes you just get crazy mutations like the one we call the uh, fancy feathers. Oh, I love those. And, yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. Is, and, that, red, is that red threads that, one? Yeah, red thread, oh, there's copper and pink. They're on that first page in the upper left and down one. Yeah. And then uh, you get personal favorites. Um, you know, we, we picked the hipsters. We had to get all these millennial names. <laughs> <laughs> like well, who comes Taylor, up with those? Taylor, Dexter, Jasper. We had to look those all up. Uh, Piper. Yes. And then uh, Zoe is my absolute favorite of that lot. And uh, electric slide for wild color. Maka. You know, oh, I love that one. And uh, Marrakesh is, is up way, way up there in my uh, selection. So most of these tend not to flower or many of them? Um, yeah, actually they're the perfect plant if they don't flower. Right. It makes and it I, really hard, really hard for breeding. The best we can do on most varieties is that they don't flower till really late in the season, when the photo period changes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but most of them are very light, or sometimes they have flowers that are really quite nice, really dark blue and short, not the long stringy ones. It, it was well, interesting. That I did a talk in uh, Switzerland in uh, Vadensville for an urban uh, conference. And uh, it was like going back 60 years for coleus to see what they had. It was crazy. And they're just lanky, floppy things with okay color and that's all they had. I was out of school there. But well, uh, yeah, wonderful things, great for massing, uh, uh, relatively fast growing. Some are um, pretty darn compact. Those. The thread series are super compact. Yeah, you got miniatures. And, you know, just feed them and uh, let them go. You, you know, your long, your long days will really make them go crazy. Yeah, and and I kind of remember as a kid, these were more like shade plants, but I've seen them like down in Nashville, Botanical Garden, and the heat and the full bright sun, and that was a few years ago, and that's where I grow them too, so. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you know your, your quality of bright sun is so different than what we have and you go to Thailand and it's another factor of two for the light that's coming down. So you, you shouldn't have any problem growing any of these in full sun. And uh, I, I grow quite a few. Last year I found 20 varieties shopping at all different nurseries. I finally found Macaw. It was oh, hot good. on my list there. A beautiful yeah. plant. And uh, I do winter some over in my greenhouse and they do get ugly and scraggly but you can cut a piece of it and stick it in water and root it get it under some lights it'll start growing again it's almost like you know yeah. the tissue yeah. culture thing i mean they'll they'll keep growing and then just keep making cuttings until you get a decent looking plant again. yeah well i suggest um rooting them in sterile soil 
And the reason is that the water roots that you get are fairly weak. And sometimes you'll, you know, you transplant them and they just break off. Cause exactly. Nothing yeah, there. So, but if you do it in the soil, they just, they go from strong to stronger. Well, that saves and a step. Too. And they don't even, they don't even need rooting hormone. They're just, they're just ready to grow. But, you know, uh, if you go to, um, you have Costco's up there, don't you? Yes. Costco's have these great LED lights for starting seeds. You know, it's just their shop light. It's about, about 20 bucks or in Alaska, about a hundred. And, uh, that was a joke. Uh, but, um, it's really terrific. I've got one over my terrarium and the plants are doing crazy, crazy cool. Yeah, with the coleus, I always would tell people, like teacher friends would have one and just covered with the flowers. And I said, you, you should be cutting those off because a plant's job is to reproduce and make seeds. So if they're going to seed, if they're making their flowers, they're sort of like completing their life cycle. Tell me if I'm yeah. wrong. And yeah, if you so cut they, those flowers just, off, it's going to keep growing. Exactly. Just pinch them off. And, um, and but if the plant ever does get lanky, you can pinch them. But, but these are self-branching, which means they, they just make branches at an early stage. And um, you don't have to pinch them. They just get big, bigger and better. Yeah. And it's to call them a pinch plant. So uh, yeah. another cool thing about coleus, people may not know it, uh, is in the mint family so yep. it has square stems and those stems like we were just talking about growing in water and you are right I've, I've let them grow like in my arrow garden I root them in there uh, which I now may change to soil if the uh, roots get too long because where that leaf node is the there is differentiation the leaf now turned into a root but if you let them get too long and then plant them, they just immediately crash and burn. I've had that happen. Yep. So yeah. you were right. Yep. So don't let them get too big. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and switch to soil and it will save a step too. Yeah, but just make sure that soil is sterile. There's some tricks about um, adding water, putting it in the microwave and, and just sterilizing it that way. But your, your wife or husband will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes different things go in the dishwasher or... Uh, it depends on if they're a, they're a plant person. If they're yeah. a plant person, it's all. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I'm married to one, so that's good. Good deal. <laughs> yeah, it is a good deal. Well, I love the, the colors are amazing, and I'll be on my search again to uh, grab all the varieties I can. I, I did uh, clean up a few and... and get those ugly wintered over ones, they're still alive uh, to, to grow. So we're kind of starting over again. I found that also, um, you know, you'll get them in a four inch nursery pot here generally. And the bigger the pot that you put them in, the bigger the plant gets. Does, does oh, that, yeah. Okay, that seemed to be happening. Yeah, the ones we were um, getting the three foot wide were in 10 inch, um, it's that pulp pot with the hanging, you know what I mean? Those brown pulp pots. Yes, yes. And those are 10 inch and they were getting three feet wide. Nice. Oh yeah. Well, and there are some coleus that would look really good in in hanging pots like that too, which is something, as you know, you've been here, uh, Alaska likes hanging baskets because we want lots of color in our face for our short season. So, yeah. What do you? What would you recommend for something like that? More maybe one of the smaller, more kind of a trailing one. Uh, the ones that are called the um, we have the color clouds. We have the um, the flying carpets that refers to their growth habits. So they're they just look like a floating cloud, or yeah, just a, a a magic carpet going by. <laughs> and uh, and the what I recommend to everybody is that you make the investment into drip irrigation. So you could have, you know, 30 of these along the eaves of your house and use time release fertilizer in the pot where the emitters uh, drip the water and you don't have to fertilize them. And you don't have to water them. It's all automated. Automatic timer, of course. Nice. It's all, all come down in price. 
Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> All right. And yeah, drip irrigation is pretty handy if you've got a lot of plants. Boy, last summer, it was so hot up here. And by hot, I mean 75 to 80. Uh, you know, Fairbanks can get up to 100, but it can be... Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, yeah. So oh. it was it was hard to keep up. We had uh, a lot of hanging baskets. We have, you know, Bacopa and different things that we call basket stuffers. It was yeah. just hard to keep up with the watering. And then they seemed like they accelerated their growth and they just wanted to be done with it, go to seed, and <laughs> end their lives. So it, it was tough last year to keep things looking good. And I just saw a thank you on the screen. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. oh good. <laughs> Stacy, let's go down a little bit and look at a couple more of these. Uh, yeah, there's a there. second second page too. Okay, are there miniatures down below this? Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you. you're, you're so easy. <laughs> I am easy. Oh, I love right. the feathers too. The the red threads up there, the first one. Yeah, and they'll uh, crest every now and then, which is just sort of a a thing they do. So you'll have fifty shoots, like they're all fused together, and it just it looks cool as Cool wow. stuff. So uh, that's just part of it. And who else do we got? Smooth talker that kind of grows like the carpets. Yeah, that's nice. You just kind of find the, you know, the flavor that fits you. And um, if you have like a gold shrub or something, uh, and you do a carpet of red, it just the combination one plus one equals three. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's one just, Stacy, could you scroll up a little bit? This one on the bottom right of... Uh, That's Smoky Rose. Is a there we go, Smoky Rose. Wow. How is did that... I know that was the one you're going to comment on? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> you can click right on that and look at that thing. That is so gorgeous. So, Harding and uh, Stone 10 to 11. They're, they're not going to... Well, you can uh, click, on, click on those other pictures in the bottom. And um, there you go. And you can do... That's a... That's a, just a growing pot. But that's a nice size pot, and they will fill that. Is that oh, one yeah. plant in there? Yep, one cutting, one wow. tiny cutting. Wow. Nice, part shade, full shade. I've had them in full sun, too. They seem fine. Yeah. So Lovely. you can bring these into the house in the fall and, and try and winter them over, but our houses are hot and dry in the winter and uh, they're not gonna be too happy. They'll get uglier and uglier. So definitely make some cuttings before that. But now that I'm saying that word, some of these are patented or maybe many of them or all of them. What, what can you tell us about? Um, pretty much either trademarked or patented, which means if they're for your personal use, you just wanna um, run, you know, make some cuttings, that's just fine. If you are going to sell them, that's illegal, and it hurts us. You know, if we don't get income from royalties, we go out of business. Yeah, and oh, you'll get fair. you'll get crap for the next fifty years. So. Yeah, well, you've done that, the legwork, and so you deserve to have that. So, yeah. yeah, I just didn't want the coalesce police, you know, coming in and Black Hawk helicopters and. Oh no, I already reported you. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I love doing the cuttings i love propagating them and uh it, it's fun it's easy it's a great way to share with friends or just keep keep them alive and keep them going so uh another one i like a lot is the um sedona it was kind of all oh, that yeah kind of and that that actually we um a lot of our breeding was to get the color of sedona but not it has a defect where you get kind of like a scorch mark on it, uh -huh. but it is one of my favorite colors. Yeah. Uh, so we were trying to get that defect out of it, and we we did do that. So you'll see that in some of our orange varieties. Yeah, that's a nice one. What what's, I, uh, what's similar to that? That's what I'm just backing up right now. We one of our newest ones is this Valentine. That's a large leaf on that one. That's the first one of our large leafed ones but just a beautiful solid red but i uh sedona's in fancy feathers um in uh, like jasper 
and uh, a lot of it in nutmeg, uh, Marrakesh, uh, that's pretty much where the oranges came from. But we did not want that defect. Yeah. And we would get it. We had to just toss them right away. Yeah. There's Valentine. Yeah. There's one that's you, maybe campfire or something. Like like it's like a campfire glow, kind of it's an orangey one. Maybe that's not the name, but yeah, if you go to if you go back to color clouds and click on one of the, the bigger pots, uh, you can kind of see the habit of it. Okay. I, I see on the left too, if everybody can see this, you 47 varieties, your hardiness zone uh, is over there. You can look it up by color. You can look it up by habit. You want them all, by the way. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what's your first frost where you're living? Oh, it can vary. Last frost is May 31st. Traditionally, it could be moved up as much as two or three weeks. We don't know. First frost, uh, probably mid-September. Okay, so I would say um, around the uh, start of S September 1st is when you should probably take your cuttings and if you need to get them through the winter. Oh, I love spicy. Look at that. That's so cool. Hey, who comes up with all these names? Oh, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> you have some uh, funny ones. No, I, I used to name probably 90% of the plants that came out of here. And uh, then we started having meetings and and they ended up getting really, really long and everybody had their own ideas. So uh, it's still by committee, but it's a little little faster process. <laughs> all right. Days. There's a fancy feathers. Look at that. May, people may not have been aware of this type of uh, coleus really. Yeah, Car Carol Ann, I just said September 1st for taking your cuttings. Okay. To get them through the winter. That was Good. a comment that popped up. Look at that. Yep, that's the, that's the little collection there. That's really different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I donate money to all the nurseries around the area and go out to the valley too. So that's that's our uh, thing. My wife and I do is uh, do a little shopping, and we've already gotten a few basket stuffers and things. But always on yeah. that search for more coleus. So uh, that's Matanus Matanuska. Yeah, in the valley out there, there's some favorite nurseries there, some good ones around town, and uh, we need to support these guys. As I'm saying now, gardening is essential, and Look anything that. something that soothes your mind is is valid. That's a great one. The hipsters, huh? So there's a whole series of hipsters. Yeah, and they just <laughs> being being in a series, they all have to have some similarity between each other, like you. If you bring up Zoe, you'll see that same sort of uh, same sort of leaf, but in a whole different color range. That that that's my go-to. It's just such a cute one. Oh, that is great. It is not a great leaf. That is <laughs> tasty, tasty. Uh, a free-spirited, very unique individual. Ooh, I'll have, to, I'll have to borrow that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we've got a couple questions here. Stacy, can we look at those or you want to read them off or what's easiest? Yeah. So when I'm in share screen mode, I can't actually see the chat box. Okay. So I can, I, I can take I, it out or if you want to handle those, I can stay on the website. No, I'll do that. Let's jump in here a little bit. So uh, thanks for reminder, the shape or I guess... Um, talking about pinching maybe back a while ago. And uh, Carol Ann says, they're gorgeous. What's the best way to keep them as house plants in Alaska? When and where do you take cuttings to make more plants? We kind of already talked about that. Dan suggests maybe early September. Uh, and you know, maybe um, I would say have at least three to four sets of leaves on it. Peel off the two lowest leaves and that'll be your cutting. Yeah, and just before it freezes, bring them in. Uh, I always try and have a little article or have written before bringing in your um, the plants that have been vacationing outside, which we do. Don't you know when spring comes? Finally, don't burn them up in the sun. But all your house plants probably should have an outdoor vacation when you yeah. bring them in. 
that's maybe but if you're a, but if you're going in as a house plant over the winter absolutely you need an led or yeah. fluorescent light and uh most people do them a little far away they need to be a little closer to uh, maintain their their bushiness so there is an un, unpaid endorsement right there for having lights or our local columnist, Mr. Lowenfels, always reminds you of lights, and I, and I would say that too. Even now we're up to 15 hours of daylight, but it's cloudy today. It's it's kind of bright, but there's there's probably not a lot of good stuff happening. I've got plants under lights to start them. And uh, yeah, for the winter, long, dark days, dry in our house. So good, good to have a backup with some cuttings, sir. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well. Sounds good. Okay, good. Uh, all right, well, let's see if any more things pop up there. Um, so yeah, on the left side there, you can look it up by flower color, leaf color, not not so much into the flower colors, but that that's, they're kind of cute, a little spiky. Um, that, that could be an added thing, but uh, gosh. Yeah, we, we actually try not to show anything in flower because it's a, it's a negative with, a lot of people have told me so. <laughs> well, those pictures are elsewhere. All right. Also on that left side, there's spreading, trailing, mounding, all, all different. Uh, yeah, it's all on, our, all on our website. It's all free. Yeah. We actually don't sell any plants off our website. This is just, um, just in, for information for the consumer. And we have a page on every single one of these, how to grow them. Um, so when you get into them, if you click on an individual one, you'll you'll see links to the whole information pages. On that flying carpet, there are the second down and second to the right, or spicy. So Sorry. On, Sorry. That's okay. That a, which one are you doing? Flying carpet. Which one? Uh, shocker. That looks like it would be a great hanging basket one, too. Yeah, plain carpets are just the, the best. There's a picture in a hanging basket down below. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. Up. Catch up to you guys. There you go. How cool is that? Yeah, but you see the the on the uh, green. Uh, click on the product profile. We've done a lot of work. Okay, s slide down a little, and you'll find the uh, the details about the plant and how to grow it, how to plant the plug that comes in if you get a plug, what it should look like as it matures, uh, timing, fertilizing, everything is there. We do that for every single plant. That's awesome. That's really helpful. You know, if you are motivated, you think, I really need to print that out. You really don't because you can always come back and look at it. If you must print it out, get yourself some page protectors and a binder, about a two inch binder, not a big giant four inch, hard to handle, but a small one and get them organized as you go along. But, you know, what, one coleus is, I would say, uh, that is similar in growth habit to another. I mean, there might be a different trailing or upright or, or something, but as far as your basic care, they're gonna be pretty similar. So don't worry about printing out everything, but good to know it's there. Yep. Look at that. Gosh, don't you want them all? I've been to a few places and I have found some already. So uh, they're just, uh, they were in like a two to three inch pot and put them in four inch, let them get caught up and settled in. And then I'll put them in uh, at least a six inch pot and then probably go to a 10 or 12 because they will I'd, fill. I'd, I'd say you're smitten. I am definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Pink, Creek, Pink sure. Poodle was, was a weird name. Uh, this <laughs> is, we were supporting this company called uh, Jardine in Japan. They're one of our biggest customers. And they just, for some reason, loved this whole idea of a Pink Poodle. And they said, you, do you have Pink uh, Coleus? We want to name it Pink Poodle. And, we will, <laughs> and we'll pay for the trademark. And went, okay. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. There it is. That sounds good. Yeah, that's beautiful too. Uh, they're all beautiful. I can't help myself. Great. And so, uh, any, any more questions? I don't see anything right now, but feel free folks to jump in with 
questions. Uh, come on, here's your big chance. Yeah. Let's see, what else? So you've got uh, licensee relationships with partner labs in China, New Zealand, Indonesia, Costa Rica, and Vietnam, and working on an uh, URC, Unrooted Cutting Farms, in Africa and Central America. Yeah. That's amazing. And you're going to these places too. Well, it's mostly my business partner these days. I used to go, um, but he's, he's more of a managing partner, which makes life easier for me. Yeah, that's a long trip. Those and, places. and you go to like Guatemala and you don't go anywhere without a guy with a machine gun. It's just <laughs> a whole different kind of life. Yeah, it is. Wow, look at this guy, Flickr. This is the best ad ever. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Branches well with no pinching. So lots of like, great information right here. Y you know, it's, they're so easy to grow. Don't even worry about this stuff. You know it's there and it's worth a look, but don't be worried about it. Get, get yourself a coleus today. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. That's so good. So uh, we're not going to really see Terra Nova name on a coleus. You'll, like you'll, you'll see it on the label when you okay. buy it, if it's legit. <laughs> if it's but illegal, it's not going to be. legal crop, send us a letter. Okay. Is it, am, am I not going to find like proven winners, but your name's in there? Um, don't say I don't that. know. Uh, we, you know, a lot of times these other companies will just take our genetics and we could, we actually, it's just a really a rough point with us where they just take oh. our genetics uh, do one cross, introduce it without testing it, and ends up maybe pretty, but it's a crappy plant, does not grow well, and that hurts everything across the board. Okay, so... Oh, I don't want to grow coleus. They're really hard to grow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just sort of a, okay. a, splint, a splinter in our finger. <laughs> well, I'll look for that label then with Terra Nova on there. There you go. <laughs> Un unknown land or how'd you come up with Terra Nova? Um, actually, if you look at very old maps, I, I saw when I was in the Vatican, um, Terra Nova was the name for Newfoundland, oh, new found, okay. new, newfound land. Right. Terra, Terra Nova. But I want it as a new world, Terra world. Yeah. And now it is. Yep. It is. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fancy feathers black. You can get any color you want here. This is awesome. Yeah, and, and be you know combine them with um, with other plants. They just sort of grow. They'll grow around them. Yeah, I was actually just thinking of that. You read my mind there. They they can stand alone, but they can sure fit in a nice container. And and we do containers well here. You do you do the best begonias I've ever seen. Oh yeah. Very good. Yeah. Carol Ann says, I want them all. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you can, you can, can have them. <laughs> I can understand. Yeah. That, so. uh, but they, you know, any place you want to grow a tuberous begonia and have it contrast with the flower, uh, they'd be, they'd be nice at the base. As long as it's, you know, the, you go to some, they've got to be larger tuberous. You know, the non, non stops are a pretty low grower. And uh, but if it's a it's a it's a larger variety, one that comes from the tubers, um, those will be great companions. You are so lucky to be able to grow tubers there. <laughs> People in the south are just like, oh, we wish. Yeah, or peonies down south, they're not too happy down there. No, sulking. Yeah. And so you guys, look at that. We are lucky to be able to grow all this now. And a uh, question, Dan, we can't order from your website. Are there nurseries in Anchorage or online? Julie's asking. And there are definitely nurseries in Anchorage or the Valley. Do you, can you? Can you mention them on the show or? Sure, I don't see why not. They're not a paid sponsor, but you know, I like to say we got to support local and, and they should sponsor us. And there is, a, there is a, um, 
a mail order company I'm looking up right now. I know Rosie Dawn is a, somebody I've used before. Doing pretty good. Mail order coleus plants. Okay. Wow, like that one, uh, Carol. Oh, Rosie Dawn. There they are right at the there very top. Go. Okay, good one. Yeah. Rosie Dawn. Grow Joy. So if you just type in uh, mail order coleus plants, um, that's the way you can get the, co the cool stuff. Good, yeah. We'll check locally first, but... Uh, Absolutely. We, we did talk to Renee last week was saying uh, that they're, they're selling out of a lot of things. There's no worldwide seed shortage though, but some of the plants, some of the seeds uh, selections might be hard to get, but they are in the local nurseries. Uh, you might just have to pick something different this year. Your favorite might not be there, but definitely shop local first. And these guys are open. Um, is just your comfort level is as far as going there, but it's a pretty, the nurseries are wide open spaces. I'm, I'm very comfortable there. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm uh, looking at Rosie Dawn's thing. They have uh, 13 of our varieties. Oh, nice. Uh, right there. It looks like they have over a hundred and Maka is the best seller. Oh, good. I can see why. Yeah, that's a cool one. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I was on a mission for about two years to find that. I, f I finally found it up. Uh, fresh starts. I'll, I'll throw out a nursery for you out in the valley. I think it's mm -hmm. on out Outer Springer Ro Road. Fresh starts. It's, it's just a small one. It's a uh, related kind of to the Vanderweels family, which are um, agricultural folks out in the valley. And um, th she sets up the, the little hoop house as a beautiful display area, as well as all the, the plants there are for sale, but they give you some ideas on uh, how you can decorate with them too. So that's one of my favorite valley places to go, but we, we hit them all, I'll probably do that this next week. Went out to mile 5.2 and PM and Bells and Diamond so far. Um, so just go on a mission. <laughs> hey, I've got a virtual appointment with my doctor in a couple minutes here. Okay. So a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, likewise. Well, let's try something. How does Aurora Gardens look? Haven't been out there yet. This isn't going to work because uh, Dan and I have a little band called Fish and the Guppies that we play at uh, this conference we go to, but we're going to try something here. <laughs> you go guys <laughs> pleasure meeting everybody see you dan we'll talk all soon. right talk Everybody on else? brother